Now, life is full of ups and unfortunately downs. Maybe you feel like you're stuck in a bit of a rut and nothing seems to be going right. Here are some simple things that you can do to get yourself back on track and pick yourself up again. Let's go. Hi guys, it's Laura and I help you live a simpler, happier, more spacious life. And maybe you feel like you are not making any progress, that you are procrastinating more than usual and just not getting anything done. Your heart is not in it. Or maybe you're stressed out, you're overwhelmed because we're coming into holiday season and that can cause a lot of anxiety. Or you've got something going on at work, going on at home, or depending on what season you're in, because we're coming into winter here in the Northern Hemisphere right now, and I'm not about it, but maybe the colder, darker days are really starting to get you down. The very first thing on my list of pick-me-ups seems so simple, but trust me, this works. It's to get dressed, and I don't mean, you know, like overly dressed, you don't have to put on something super fancy, though that probably will make you feel great, but even just putting on yoga pants and a t-shirt or something. Something that just gets you into the mindset that you're ready for action, you are ready to go. If something were to crop up, you would be able to run out and go do that errand or take the bins out or, you know, go visit a friend, whatever needs doing. You are prepared for action, whereas if you are wearing loungewear or maybe even pajamas, the signal that you're sending is that you're not up for anything. Anytime I am feeling a bit mopey or down in the dumps. I get myself dressed, including shoes, and all of a sudden, I don't know what it is, but it makes me feel like I can tackle anything or, you know, if something were to arise, that I am ready to take advantage of that opportunity or to go do that thing. It's a simple, kind of funny little thing, but it does actually work. Next is to call or text a friend for a quick chat. It does not have to be like a really deep and meaningful conversation. You could even just send them a meme or something, but just opening the lines of communication and getting back in touch with people who make you feel good. It's forming that social connection with another human being. Now, as an introvert, I have a tendency to avoid human interaction at all costs, but I always feel better when I do reach out to the people in my life that I really care about. It kind of just reminds me that there is somebody out there who loves me, who's thinking about me, who cares about me, who can put a smile on my face. They remind me that I'm not alone, that I don't have to go through this alone. They can support me, encourage me, or just have a general chat about life with me. But there's someone out there who is ready and willing to talk to me and to figure out, you know, what's going on with me and yeah, just be there for me. So if you are feeling a little bit down, even if you don't feel like you have the energy for a chat, even if you feel like you don't want to talk to anyone, just send a quick text. I promise you, it is going to make you feel better. Hi, yeah, or talk to a furry friend, isn't that right? You always make me feel better, don't you? Hugs. Hugs also make everything better. <laughs> oh. <laughs> now, obviously these tips are just kind of for general malaise. If you feel that it runs a little bit deeper than that, then maybe you need to speak to someone else. So I'm going to link to, uh, you know, professionals, therapists, crisis hotlines, etc., in the description. Or speak to your doctor. Next then, if you can see me, <laughs> is to disconnect for a little bit. I think sometimes we don't even realize how much of a negative impact social media has on us. Good girl, that's a good sit. Um, you know, we don't realize how much we're comparing ourselves to others. You scroll through your feed and it's full of people who are, you know, living their best life and they're maybe on holiday somewhere or they're share sharing a picture of their immaculately tidy home or, you know, all of the cool, amazing, fun, adventurous things that they're doing. And obviously we all know on a like rational level that those are only the highlight reels but it can still just have that negative impact on us where we feel like, oh, you okay, <laughs> she fell off the bed, you all right? It can still have an impact on us where we kind of, even subconsciously compare ourselves to that person. Where's your puppy? Oh, you're sitting on it. 
here's Poppy. We may not realize that we are making those negative comparisons, that we are subconsciously thinking, you know, I haven't achieved what they've achieved, or I don't have that gadget or gizmo that is going to make me see a, seem cool and trendy and, you know, up on all the latest technology. You know, sometimes I think, you know, I'm not living this luxurious lifestyle, even though when I really sit down and think about it, I don't want to be living that lifestyle. I want to be able to slow down and just enjoy the simple things like an over-attention seeking puppy. <laughs> but again, it's that impact that it has that you're not even aware of on a conscious level. So switch off even just for a little bit and give your brain time to just rest and reset. Switch off the comparison trap for even an hour or two. Oh yeah, back to belly rubs. And also remember, like Jovi here, to take a break. It's easy to feel like you don't have any time to take a break because you're just rushing and racing from one thing to the next and your to-do list is a mile long. The reality is you either do it voluntarily or your body will force you to do it because it will just run out of steam. Not everything on your to-do list is essential. You can afford to drop a few things, even if it's just temporarily until you get yourself back on track. But you don't have to, you know, watch that TV show while you're eating a meal and scrolling on your phone and trying to have an interaction with a family member or something like that. You don't have to do all the things. The world will not stop turning because you take 30 minutes for yourself. You can sit and enjoy a meal, you can read a book, you can take a little walk for yourself, even if it's just a little stroll around the block or even just your back garden. But if you are running low on energy, then you need to stop and refuel even just a little bit because otherwise you will quickly start to run on empty. Here it is. Now. Next is to write lists. So things that you are grateful for, things that you are proud of, and things that you are looking forward to. When we are down in the dumps, it's easy to feel kind of worthless. It's easy to feel like there's nothing good going on in our lives. It's easy to feel like there's nothing to look forward to, that everything is just same as it's always been. But taking stock of what you're grateful for reminds you of how much abundance is in your life and writing a list of your achievements, of the things that you're proud of, forces you to kind of stop and celebrate those. It's really easy to gloss over them in the everyday. You know, you kind of, you do something and then you're just on to the next thing. So pause to give yourself pat on the back. And then the list of things that you are looking forward to. Anticipation makes up the bulk of the happiness and the excitement around an event. Even if it's just something really small, even if it's something like, you know, you can't wait for sunrise, you can't wait for the flowers to bloom again, you can't wait for summer to roll around <laughs> again. There is always something to look forward to. Again, taking a moment to remind yourself of that, to write them all down, even if they are only small, can help to build that anticipation, build that excitement, and to pull you through a dreary spell. It's a classic case of this too shall pass. This next one works wonders for me. Hi! <laughs> and that is to revisit something that you love. That could be a film, it could be a particular album, it could be a you know, a favorite toy that you used to play with, something really simple. A favorite book that you always go back to, just something that brings you joy and comfort. It will make you feel at ease. It will give you a sense of, like I said, comfort, but security and familiarity, that sense that everything is okay. There are certain things in our lives that just feel like coming home or they feel like home and that is the kind of sense that you want to create. Find what those things are for you and then utilize them. Oh she's heading for the pillows again. I've already had to put those pillows back on the bed once because you knocked them off. What? What? You're a messer. You're a messer. Surround yourself with security or comfort blankets or pillows <laughs> if you're Joey. Following on from that then, make your environment as comfy and cozy as you can. That might mean lighting some candles, it might mean burning some incense, it could be, you know, gathering some throws and some cushions, some just 
things that make you feel again comfortable cozy secure and safe picture what a beautiful comforting inspiring space would look like for you and then try and recreate it as best you can maybe you've seen one of those book nooks you know that are like a window seat and it's all comfortable and there's pillows and stuff maybe you don't have a window seat but you could still bring an armchair or a comfortable chair over by the window and then you know get yourself a blanket or something and curl up there so do what you can to create the environment that you will feel best in and this doesn't have to be your entire home it can just be one tiny little corner I know certainly for me that when I am feeling a little bit down when I am kind of stuck in a rut housework is usually one of the first things to be bumped off my list but then it creates this kind of vicious cycle where you know the house is messy that makes me feel bad which you know kind of drains me depletes me and then I don't have the energy to actually go do anything about it but even just creating one corner where you feel that you are safe that you feel is you know clean and tidy and the way that you want it that can build the momentum that will then eventually ripple out throughout the rest of your home but start with that one little area that's just for you also eat something healthy now this does not have to be like a big meal or anything you don't have to go to any extraordinary effort but it could be something as simple as eating a piece of fruit or drinking a glass of water just something that sends a message to your brain that you are nourishing yourself and you're doing something to take care of yourself you are doing right by yourself and your body obviously this is not something that's going to change your life in an instant you're not going to suddenly become this you know uber healthy person but it's just that first step it's doing something to kind of wriggle yourself out of your rut and to feel like you are taking a little bit of control of your life and you're doing something that is you know you're making a good decision for you i always feel better when i choose you know a piece of fruit or something over junk because it's telling my body that hey i'm a grown-up now i can look after myself speaking of doing something good for yourself <laughs> What are you doing? Do something proactive, and that could be, you know, scheduling a checkup for yourself, could be booking an eye test or booking your car in for a service. I can't reach you all the way over there. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Sit. 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 There. That's better. That's better. You could send an email inquiry about that class that you're interested in or you know make an appointment for someone to come out and service your boiler or whatever needs doing how okay how am i supposed to work under these conditions again you are extending those good decisions this is not a good decision <laughs> You're extending those good decisions kind of outside your body or just to your body, to your general health, but also to your home. You're taking good care of yourself and what is around you. And it's not something that, you know, requires a huge amount of energy, even just booking it, knowing that you have, again, taken some control, that you've done something to better you and your home. When you are feeling low, it's easy to let those types of things slide because they're not urgent, but the reality is they are important. Take care of what is important to you. Make those proactive decisions now. On top of that then, try and achieve one small goal. Some days it will be as simple as taking a shower other days it might be you know filling up the dishwasher it could be doing some dusting it might just be going for a walk it could be prepping some like fruits and veggies so that you do have a healthy snack on hand when you are feeling down you are drained of energy you know mentally emotionally you're probably pretty spent so the thoughts of doing something the thoughts of cleaning your house or you know getting in a workout or something can be really overwhelming like you just don't have it in you so pick a tiny goal something that is just taking the first step something that is not going to require that huge amount of effort that you just don't have in you right now again it's just that tiny thing that first step that is going to help you wriggle free from your rut a little bit and build up some momentum you can also try something new you know routines are great but they can over time make you feel 
feel like you're stuck in a rut because you're just doing the same thing over and over again and all your days start to blur together and you start to wonder like what is the point to any of this like nothing seems new and exciting you'll find yourself going through the motions so shake things up a little bit <laughs> when life is starting to feel stale you might have to just try something new <laughs> okay okay i see what's happening here all right okay <laughs> no licking Oh my good, oh, you've destroyed my lens. Oh, oh my goodness, slobber. Is that better? I hope so. You don't have to go like bursting right out of your comfort zone, you go skydiving or anything like that, but it could be as simple as trying out a new recipe, listening to a new type of music, you know, picking up a book that you wouldn't normally read. Novelty, you know, doing something new causes your brain to sit up and take notice. You know, it has to, because this is something out of the ordinary. It needs to pay attention. And those are the types of things that make you feel like your life is exciting, that there's something going on. It kind of wakes your brain up. If you give your brain something new and novel to focus on, it can help to pull it out of that same old, same old slump that it's been in and remove at least one thing from your life. Look around, you will probably find something there that is just weighing you down, something that you don't need cluttering up your life. And that could be a physical item, but it could also be something that's on your to-do list, something that is in your calendar. It could be, you know, a thought or a feeling that you just don't want or need anymore, something that's not serving you and you're ready to let it go. It could be as simple as just unsubscribing from a newsletter that you no longer want to get. It could be unfollowing an account on social media that doesn't make you feel great about yourself. Sometimes we are stuck not because of anything we are doing, but it's because we are weighed down by something else. So examine the things in your life that are making you feel that way, that are making you feel stuck, making you feel like you can't make progress or you're not good enough or you know you look around and all you see is something that stresses you out and overwhelms you and that's what clutter can do you know it's easy to look around and think okay it's just a little bit messy you know nothing really too bad but everywhere you look you are seeing something to do something that needs to be tidied away or moved somewhere else and it's this constant mental drain that can slowly start to suck all of the energy out of you so pick one thing that you're no longer interested in something that is just a burden in your life and lift that from yourself you will feel so much lighter you will be able to move and live again now if you are ready to hit the reset button and get that fresh start feeling i have a short playlist for you that shows you exactly how i do it i go through everything i do to wipe the slate clean and feel like a new person again <laughs> just, just chilling there you can watch that right here and until next time grev mila magrev august